I'm going to get straight into it and um, get into what I call Overflow 101, because I'm the first speaker on this particular topic, <laughs> which means that I don't have to worry about saying something that somebody else has already said, <laughs> which is great. But what I want to do is take us to the real basics, and I don't want you to think that I'm trying to oversimplify the topic, but I think there's some things that we need to remember in order for us to understand the principle of overflow that the Lord is just trying to impart to our hearts during this month of October. So I've got two children in, with birthdays in, in October, um, so overflow is something that we really need as a family in October. Overflow of energy, resources, yes, Lord, bring it, and so I'm really happy to be here with you guys this morning. Um, right, so Overflow 101, and I, you know, my, my background is that I was an English teacher. So let's go to the definition of overflow. And if we're looking at our typical online dictionary, to fill to capacity and spread beyond its boundaries. To fill to capacity and spread beyond its boundaries, okay? Can we all say inside out? Okay. Again, a little louder. Okay. Can we agree that that definition speaks about something that starts on the inside and then comes to the outside, okay? So it's inside out, all right? The immediate scripture that a lot of us think about is Psalm 23, my cup overflows, all right? And we're going to get there. I, I thought about putting a picture of a cup up onto the screen, but what I found instead was the picture of a bath, okay? It's this beautiful standalone Oval bath, uh, like I have a thing about baths, you can ask my husband about it. If, if the place we're staying has a bath en suite, I'm winning, I'm winning, okay? I think it must be a girl thing, although my son is quite prone to, pot, to a nice long bath. Um, but here we have this incredible picture of this overflowing bath. I mean, that is really, there's no stopping that. <laughs> It is overflowing, filling that bathroom. And what I, what I wanted to speak about around the inside out is that inside, we see that overflow relies on a connection to the source, okay? There's a tap that has to fill that bath. There has to be a connection to the source. What it's not dependent on is the outside. There is nothing outside that is going to fill that bath. What is filling that bath comes from the connection inside. It is not determined by the circumstances outside. So that's literally overflow 101. I did say basics, right? Inside out, connection to the source. So I want to start at looking at the inside. And let's go to Psalm 23, verse 5 where that scripture actually comes from, my cup overflows. Psalm 23, verse 5, you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessing. Let's go now to Proverbs 4, verse 23. These are all scriptures that are quite familiar to us, I would think. Proverbs 4, 23 says, keep and guard your heart with all vigilance, and above all that you guard, for out of it flows the springs of life. Okay, starting to see a picture, I hope. Luke 6, verse 45. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. Luke 6 verse 45. So our hearts, our hearts are the vessel for overflow. When we see the scripture, our cup runs over. In the, the Passion Translation, it actually says, 
You become my delicious feast even when the enemies dare to fight. You anoint me with the fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my heart overflows. So instead of cup, we actually see the word heart being used. And we can see that that's the vessel for overflow. The place of overflow is our hearts. It's the inside. It's the core of us. And very often in the scripture, the term heart and soul are used inter- interchangeably. They are, the, the, it's the place of our emotion. It's the place of connection in our hearts is where overflow happens. That is the place of overflow. And that is why the scripture in Proverbs encourages us to guard our hearts. We have to guard our hearts from offense, from disappointment, from unforgiveness, from stubbornness. There's quite a lot of scripture around a stubborn heart. And that's because these are things that can hinder overflow in our hearts. Those are the things that actually turn our focus from our source. And that's where we get into a position where instead of looking to the inside, we are now focused on the out. And as I said before, there's nothing on the outside that's going to be able to fool you. Okay? So what doesn't affect overflow is out. Circumstances do not determine overflow. In fact, let's go and have a look back at the same scriptures we've just been reading. Let's go back to Psalm 23, verse 5. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. That table is laid, that cup is overflowing in the presence of my enemies, okay? We see in the same scripture that DJ read a a little earlier, Psalm 65, verse 11, you crown the year with a bountiful harvest, even the hard pathways overflow. We see in Isaiah 43, the Lord speaks of rivers of living water flowing in the desert. The places around the external circumstance is often dry. The external circumstance is often a place of lack, a place of poverty, a place of strife, a place of attack. So often our natural mindset says that in order for me to overflow, circumstances have to be perfect. Circumstances have to be in balance. And in fact, we see circumstance as evidence. We look to circumstance to determine whether or not we are in overflow. Lord, am I blessed? Okay, I look out. Lord, have you placed blessing upon my life? Well, let me have a look out. And I I feel the Lord is encouraging us that natural circumstances will not determine supernatural overflow in your life. What is outside is not evidence of what the inside work is happening. I I passed Trudy a note on my phone because that's what we do nowadays. You don't do it on a piece of paper. And I said to her, your worship team just preached my message. Waymaker. He is the God who is working on our behalf even when we cannot see it. When our circumstances say differently. In fact, overflow is at work in our hearts. I want to go back to that picture of the bath. And again, let's go back to basics. I would never, as a mom about to run the bath, for my three children now who need to get in, I would never walk into the bathroom and go, oh dear, there's just no water. There's no water anywhere in this bathroom. I won't be able to fill this bath. 
No one here is going to be able to get in. There will be no washing and cleaning and, and bringing back the fragrances that children should smell like after a day. There will be none of that because there is no water in this bathroom. I mean, it sounds ridiculous when I say it like that, but we do it every day. In our lives, we do it every day. We have a mindset that says, I'm looking out instead of connecting to the source. Coming back to that relationship with the Lord. And that's the key. Overflow comes from cultivating a connection to the source. The key to overflow is relationship. This is why Jesus gave his life for us on the cross. So that we can have a direct relationship with him. So that we can have uninterrupted connection to the source. When he died on the cross and he cried out, that temple curtain was torn in two because it made the way open for everybody. Before that, there were strict instructions about how only the priest was allowed to go in and only under certain circumstances. And after the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, we don't have to go through a priest to have relationship with him. We have direct connection to the source. We have direct relationship with him. This is a game changer. I want to go to John 1 verse 1 to 5. Again, these should be very familiar scriptures to us. In the beginning, John 1 verse 1 to 5, the word, capital W, the word already existed. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through Him. And nothing was created except through Him. The Word, capital W, gave life to everything that was created. And His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. This is, to me, the mic drop moment. Overflow is not just a state of the heart. Overflow is the word that powered creation. Overflow is life poured out for every one of us. Overflow is the life that overcomes the darkness. Overflow is Jesus. Overflow is not just a state of the heart. It is a person. That is why relationship is the key to overflow. Because relationship is connecting to Jesus. Jesus is overflow. Jesus is overflow. It is an incredible thing to realize that this is a person. You know why? Because the scripture tells me he never changes. The scripture tells me that he comes to bring life and life more abundantly. The scripture tells me promise upon promise about overflow. Because it's Jesus. It is not a circumstance. It's not even dependent on me. It exists because it is Jesus. And it exists for everyone and it happens. Jesus Jesus continues to work. He is who he is. He cannot help but create and bring life and bring abundance, and bring prosperity, and bring fulfillment, and bring purpose, and bring promise, because that's who he is. And literally, our connection just taps into that, or not. But it is flowing all the time, whether you, it looks like it's not, or it does, does not matter. It is literally flowing all the time because that's who he is. Overflow is his character. Overflow 
is who he is. John 10 says, John 10, 10 says, the thief comes only to kill and steal and destroy. I come, in the Amplified Version, that they may have life and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. So what we see here is actually a signpost of unnatural flow. Because just as we can have flow from the inside out, life-giving flow, as soon as that flow comes from the outside in, we are in an unnatural state of flow. And what happens then? Well, we can see it in the scripture. The thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. When outside flows in, it brings death and destruction. It steals. What does it steal? It steals joy. It steals peace. When outside flows in, we go from overflow to overwhelmed. Instead of abundance, we see lack. Instead of life, we experience death. A few weeks ago, I found myself in our kitchen crying, (laughs) overwhelmed. I have struggled with anxiety in my life where I've been on medication. And I just thought, I can't go back there again, Lord. And I had sense, a sense of that. This is not, you know, out there, actually my life is fine, so I don't know what you mean about the circumstance part. There are real things we are all going through at the moment. Circumstances are real. They don't give us evidence of God's work in our lives, but that doesn't mean that they're not very real for us. Sometimes it was, it's the small things. We had a bit of overflow. Our geezer burst on a Sunday afternoon. There, were, there was water dripping through the lights in our lounge. It was wonderful. Of course, I was having a nap, which never happens. Our baby was asleep. The kids were outside with my husband. And a dripping noise woke me up. The geezer burst. So that means, of course, like days of people in and out of your house. And a few, just as that got sorted out, our garage motor packed up which meant that every time that any of us needed to get out of the house, one of the other would have to stand holding the garage door up so that the other person can draw their car out of the garage. And of course, I'm not exactly the tallest person in the family. So, you know, I had to kind of like stand on my tippy toes so that Musi could get his car out. And then if I was home alone, (laughs) it was a mess. It's exhausting. It's like, it's just exhausting, okay? In the middle of that, my daughter's best friend told us, their family told us that they were actually going to move back to the Eastern Cape, and it was happening at the end of the month. And I could just see the grief hit my child. And if you have children, you know that when their hearts break, your heart just breaks. She's had such a tough Yeah, she's gone through bullying at school and overcome it. And I just thought, like, really? (laughs) You know, you you feel that for yourself or your but especially for your children, can't they just get a break? (laughs) You know? You you know that it produces character, but you think like, oh Lord, just just you know, a, a little break. And I could see her heart was breaking, this little thing, ten years old best friend moving away in in a few weeks' time. And then, like, COVID, guys. <laughs> yeah, you just, the, the death we live with nowadays is, is overwhelming. People are ill. People, on, even when they recover, are not always in full health. It takes a lot. And I was 
looking through News 24. I like to keep abreast of what's going on in the world. And I was reading through just the headlines, and I just cried. I was like, Lord, life is hard. Circumstances are hard. My heart broke for people who have been losing sometimes both parents, babies who are being orphaned. COVID is orphaning our children. And I just was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed by the circumstances. Now, I've been trying to get my body fit, and I've been doing a bit of running, and I send my friend Trudy little screenshots sometimes because she's a runner, and I like her to be proud of me. <laughs> and I was like, maybe I need to go for a run. And I thought, no, I, I've been. You see, it wasn't my body that needed to connect to the source. It was my heart. That's what was breaking. My soul was in need of filling. And I realized I haven't been spending time in his word because he is the word. So when I spend time in the word, I get to know my Jesus. He fills me. I get to understand what he's about, and I get to understand what his plan is for my life. I hadn't been spending time in his presence. When you are with someone, just being with them, you get to know them. You get to understand what makes them tick, what upsets them, what makes them excited, what makes them happy. The glory of God Moments of the glory of God can, can feed your soul, can feed your heart. And you know what? None of what was happening on the outside was different. But suddenly, the way I began to view things was not from a natural platform, but from a supernatural platform from a kingdom mindset. And you know, the Lord reminded me of that phrase, the kingdom of heaven is light. And I was like, what do you mean, Lord, the kingdom of heaven is light? You know, Jesus used that phrase every time he began to speak a parable to explain the kingdom. And you know what happened after that? He began to speak about how people were doing things differently from the culture of the day. The parable of the man who was left for dead. He tells you how the three people arrive at the situation. This person reacts like this, that person reacts like this. And then there's a third man who reacts completely differently to the culture of the day. The kingdom of heaven is like that. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sows seed. The kingdom of heaven is like, do you know, it's, he began to speak to me to say, Natalie, when you read the Bible, wherever you read the Bible, you need to start thinking the kingdom of heaven is like. Because when Jesus came to earth and he spoke those parables, the kingdom of heaven had come. He was the embodiment of kingdom, and he had come to earth. Heaven was literally touching earth. And when he begins to speak and educates us about the kingdom of heaven is like, he's saying, it's here, it's now, it's me. And it's you, because that's how he works. He works through us. And that's what the enemy knows. So his best thing, is to get into your heart. Because he knows if he can get into your heart, into your soul, then he can get into your source. He can get into your connection. 
And people sort of see that spirit, soul, body, and, they, and we, we talk about this. It's a tug of war. Your soul either wants to be with the, your body, your natural um, wants and desires, or it wants to be in the spirit, and it's always this tug of war. And I don't see it like that. I believe our souls are actually pulling our bodies to connect into the spirit. Our souls are actually the connection between the natural and the supernatural. There should be a pulling of the natural into the supernatural. It's not a fight between the two. It's actually that the spirit, the Jesus, redeems it all. And what happens when, if we look at that bath again, when that connection is there, when that overflow is there, is that it's going to change that room. <laughs> it's going to start by changing your heart. And then it is going to overflow. In Matthew, the Pharisees are asking Jesus, where is the kingdom? Where is the kingdom? And he says, you're looking for signs and wonders, but actually the kingdom is in you. And it is with you. That is what kingdom does. That is what a connection does. That is what overflow does. It changes circumstances. It pours out whatever is needed into the culture. It is not affected by the culture. It transforms the culture. I tell you something, that bathroom is never going to look the same. There is overflow happening there that is going to bring transformation change is going to come. And that's why every single individual believer needs to be connecting to our source. There's, unfortunately, no shortcut. It is about spending time in the Word of God. It is about spending time in His presence. Because if each and every one of us can do that, what we're going to start to see is a groundswell, a spring happening. And that is transformational. That spring is life-giving. All the things that Jesus is are held in that overflow, in the kingdom. We see life. We see abundance. We see promises. We see purpose. And you know, we need those things. The world needs those things. One of the major aspects of overflow that our world needs right now is hope. And Jesus is described as the hope of nations. Jesus is the hope of your school. Jesus is the hope of your workplace. Jesus is the hope of your family. Jesus is your hope. He's the hope of Maidstone. He's the hope of Randburg. He's the hope of Discovery. He is the hope of Johannesburg. He is the hope of Cape Town. He is the hope of South Africa. And we have that. We have the hope of nations. He is a real person. And our world is desperate for him right now, desperate for him right now. I just want to encourage us. We need to get into the habits of overflow, the lifestyle of overflow. And there are things that we have been doing in our lives, like me with my running, that has become a habit, but it's not going to bring the hope of nations. It gives me a little hope. It's lovely after I run. It's not lovely when I'm running. I don't like running. <laughs> but it's a habit I've cultivated because I understand that there's an importance of me living longer because I now have a much younger child. And you know, we've got to get that into our own mindset. The world needs us because the world needs Jesus. And the way that Jesus works is through us. And the enemy is going to try and pull down that hope 
that overflow, that he's going to try and destroy that vessel as much as he possibly can. And the signposts are there. If you are looking around in your life and what you see is death, destruction, if you have had your peace stolen and, and you are seeing the enemy chipping away, I want to say to you, it's time to turn on the source. It's time to plug back in. It is time to get into the overflow. There is a shower happening and you are standing outside the shower not understanding why you're not wet. You're going, Lord, I'm, I am standing here so dry, God. I don't have anything more to give. And he's going, just get in the shower. And you know, this is not a condemnation because, because it's a relationship. You don't have to get, you, you don't have to get clean before you climb in the shower, guys. It is not up to you to get clean before you climb in the shower. You get into the shower to get clean. When you are in his presence, he just does the filling. He just does the nudging of the things that shouldn't be there in your heart. And you say, yes, Lord, I see it now. Just remove it, God, because I want to be with you. Anything that's in the way of being with you, just get it out of the way. And it's relationship. It's not hard work. We have to create the place, but we don't have to do the work. We have to take the place to the source, but then he does it. He is the overflow. It's who he is. want to pray for us this morning. Oh, Jesus, I can just sense in this room there are wounded hearts. There is a lot of disappointment, God. There is a lot of disillusion, Lord Jesus. God, circumstances are unstable and unpredictable, Lord Jesus. There is a lack of peace. There is unforgiveness. And sometimes if you have unforgiveness towards God, you need to just tell him that. You need sometimes need to forgive God. He can handle it. <laughs> so Lord Jesus, we just come before you now. We bring it all. We bring the disappointment. We bring the dry and thirstiness of our souls, Lord God. Lord, we recognize that we don't have to strive to be in the place of overflow, Lord Jesus, but that we just need to connect back with you. Lord Jesus, may we encounter you this morning. Lord God, may your glory presence itself in our hearts. Kingdom, come on earth. Kingdom, come in our hearts this morning. Lord Jesus, you are overflow. We need you. We need you, Lord Jesus. We need you in our lives. We need you in our families. We need you in our nation. Lord God, just overflow in our hearts now this morning, Father God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I just feel that there's some individual work that each of us needs to do. There are some of you who are feeling like your hearts are soft to the Lord. But there are a lot of us who are not feeling that this morning. And the thing about our souls is that 
it, our feelings are loud. And we just need to get into a place where the overflow of Jesus becomes louder. Where we allow the flow of the Spirit to heal, to bring peace, to pour out abundant life. I want you to know that if you are not experiencing abundant life, that you are not experiencing what God has for you. That's not what He wants for your life. That's not His promise over you as a believer. And sometimes the first step is just starting to believe that again. Just saying, Lord, I believe that you love me. I believe again. I believe that your desire is for me to prosper and be in good health even as my soul prospers. Go and find scriptures to tell your soul to stand on what you need to believe again. If it's your peace that has gone, go and find the scripture on peace. If you need healing, go and find a scripture on healing and just let it flow over you in his presence. Say it to yourself over and over again. That's what meditation is. It is getting those words into your soul. And at first, you will not believe it. It will be awkward. It will be uncomfortable. But as that life-giving word, it's alive. It's not words on a page. The Spirit brings life in the word. And that little trickle is going to start to flow in your heart. And that trickle is going to grow into a stream. And that stream is going to become a torrential flood of the Spirit of God through our hearts. I just encourage you now. All you need to do is connect the place to the source. And let Jesus do the rest. He already did the hard job. He died on a cross. He bled for you so that you wouldn't have to strive to have relationship with Him. So that you can come freely, broken and dirty, and let Him do the work. Let Him bring overflow. Because I tell you what, your family needs Jesus in you. Your family needs overflow. Your workplace needs overflow. Your business is going to bring overflow into your community. That's kingdom. That is the plan for our lives. Your gifting is going to bring overflow into whatever sector God has placed you in. It's creative. It's wisdom. It's peace. It's solution-driven. God's going to give you solutions in the places that you are. And people are going to go, but you don't even have the expertise for that. Yeah, you don't. But you know what? You have the spirit of creation. You have the mind of Christ in you, the same mind that put DNA together. The hope of nations is in you. 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 I just feel you're going to just need to let that get into your heart. Let that get into your spirit. And then you're going to start to see overflow. You're going to start to live in overflow. You're going to start to experience that relationship with Jesus again. There's, there's something of that in your past, but you don't even understand the future that you have in Him. 
You don't even understand the glory that He has called you to. He has got some serious, seriously amazing things coming up in your future. He has got overflow in store for you. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for that. Lord, I just prophesy overflow upon your church, Lord God. Overflow upon your people, Lord God. Lord Jesus, a relationship with you like never before, Lord God. Lord Jesus, in you is the anointing of wisdom. It is the anointing of creation. It is the anointing of peace. It is the anointing of unity and reconciliation, Lord God. And that's what we bring when we stand on the earth, Lord Jesus. Lord God, I just prophesy, Father God, heaven on earth in Johannesburg. Heaven on earth in Maidstone, Lord God. Heaven on earth throughout South Africa. Heaven on earth throughout the UK, Lord Jesus. We just thank you, Father God, that we will see a people rise up in relationship with Jesus, ready to bring overflow in every circumstance, ready to bring overflow in every sector, Father God, that, Lord Jesus, we will see you, Father God. We will see kingdom on earth, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the overflow in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.